Welcome to part two of scheduling irrigation with a pressure chamber. I'm Dr. Alexander Levin, a viticulturist with the Department of Horticulture and core faculty member of the Oregon Wine Research Institute at Oregon State University. Now before we make an actual measurement, let's take a look at some of the key features of the instrument. This is the actual chamber, the lid that seals it, and the compression screw that seals off the petiole from the outside air. Over here is the compressed gas tank and its connection to the chamber. There are two gauges on the front of the instrument. One gauge indicates the pressure in the chamber and the other gauge indicates the remaining pressure in the tank. Here is the main control valve that allows gas to flow into the chamber and exhaust the chamber when we're done with a measurement. The rate valve controls the gas flow rate into the chamber during pressurization. The safety valve automatically releases gas from the pressurized chamber if the chamber pressure were to ever exceed the safety limits of the instrument. If you are measuring leaf water potential, you'll need a regular sandwich bag. But if you're measuring stem water potential, you'll need an opaque aluminum bag. I'll discuss the differences between the two measurements in a moment. You will also need a few other items, including a sharp razor blade, a magnifying glass, and of course, paper and pencil to record the information. So the best time of the day to make a measurement is at midday, usually between 12.30 and 2 p.m. And this is also called solar noon. This is the time when the sun is the highest in the sky and when the plants are most stressed for water. It's also the time when the water potential value is changing very slowly. When you're ready to make the measurement, you should select vines that are representative of all vines in the block. Avoid using vines that are growing at row ends, end rows, or vines that are overly weak, too vigorous, or that are diseased. Once you've chosen your vine, you must decide what kind of measurement you want to make, leaf water potential or stem water potential. Both measurements are highly correlated to each other and both give you an idea of the vine's water status, or in other words, how wet or dry the vine is. Both measures are also highly correlated to many other aspects of vine physiology. So, in the end, you should choose the measure that you feel most comfortable with. Now don't let the name of these measurements fool you, as both leaf and stem water potential measurements use leaf samples. The main difference between the two measurements is how long the leaf is covered by the bag. However, as I suggested, both are very indicative of the plant's level of water stress. Leaf water potential measurements use leaf samples that are mature and fully sunlit and are generally located in the middle of the chute. The technique requires bagging the leaf with a plastic bag just prior to excision from the plant. Leaf water potential measurements are quicker to make, but they are potentially more prone to operator error compared to stem water potential measurements. Stem water potential measurements use the same kind of leaf samples as for leaf water potential. However, the technique requires bagging the leaf with an opaque mylar bag at least 30 minutes before sampling. Bagging the leaf stops transpiration, allowing the leaf's water potential to come into equilibrium with the water potential of the stem, hence the name of the measurement. Stem water potential measurements tend to be less variable between operators but they require more time to make a measurement, and sometimes it can be difficult to locate the pre-bagged leaves in the vineyard. So to measure leaf water potential, you want to choose a leaf sample that's fully expanded and mature, and located about in the middle of the canopy and exposed to the sun, like this one here. You also want to make sure that the leaf sample is free from any sort of damage or disease. For stem water potential measurements, you want to have the sample be the same kind as for leaf water potential, but you want to make sure that it's bagged prior to the measurement. And we've already selected and pre-bagged one right here. Note that the technique is the same for both measurements. The only difference is how long the leaf is bagged before you measure. Once you're ready to make a measurement, bag the leaf and use the razor blade to cut the leaf off of the chute, leaving as much petiole tissue as possible attached to the leaf. Next, bring the bag leaf to the instrument immediately. Put the bag leaf 
into the chamber lid so that the petiole only pr protrudes about half an inch and tighten the compression screw. Then carefully put the bagged leaf in the chamber and lock down the lid. Open the control valve to the chamber position and slowly open the rate valve to let gas into the chamber. Note the pressure gauge showing the increase in chamber pressure. As you increase the pressure, use the magnifying glass to view the cut surface of the petiole. Close the chamber valve at the first sign of water appearing at the cut surface. This is called the end point. Record the pressure shown on the chamber gauge. To get an accurate reading, it is important to increase the pressure slowly so you do not overshoot the endpoint. Using the rate valve, increase the pressure at about one bar per second until you get within two bars of the endpoint. Then increase at half a bar per second until the endpoint is reached. After you've made a few measurements, you'll get a feel for where the endpoint is and get a sense of when you're within two bars. Before taking any official readings, practice with a few dummy leaves first. Also, because the operator can be the largest source of error, it's advisable to have a dedicated operator making measurements if possible. Now let's discuss some potential errors and problems when making a measurement. One of the largest sources of error in leaf water potential measurement results from not bagging the leaf prior to removal from the plant. When the leaf is removed from the plant, it loses water very quickly, and that can affect your reading. In addition, when the leaf is placed into the pressure chamber, it is heated during pressurization, which can also affect the reading. It's important to make the measurement rapidly, yet precisely. As I just said, the leaf can uh, lose water quickly once you remove it from the vine. For that reason, it's important to remove the leaf within two seconds of bagging, and to pressurize it within 15 seconds of removal from the vine. For this reason, it's important to not collect a bunch of samples and bring them back to your truck, but rather to bring the instrument with you into the field. And an ATV or some sort of farm vehicle can help you do that. Sometimes the leaf can be broken when it is put into the chamber, and when pressure is applied, air is forced through the water in the xylem and causes bubbling at the cut surface. This can make it difficult to detect the endpoint. If this happens, you can stop the pressurization and exhaust the chamber immediately, which will cause the sap to return into the leaf. Then, dry the cut surface with a dry cloth or Q-tip and restart the pressurization. If making leaf water potential measurements, as opposed to stem water potential where you have to wait for equili equilibration, it's better to just get another leaf sample. If the bubbling starts again with your original sample, you are likely at or have missed the endpoint. Remember, at the correct endpoint, the xylem sap should just wet the cut surface and not form a lens or hemisphere of water. The importance of slowly reaching the endpoint cannot be overemphasized. The appearance of non xylem water at the cut end also can make it difficult for you to detect the endpoint. This may occur when you're tightening the seal on the chamber lid and accidentally squeeze the petiole, causing water from the outside of the xylem to be forced out. For this reason, it's important not to over tighten the seal around the petiole. In addition, keep as much of the petiole inside the chamber as possible. Leave only enough tissue outside of the chamber so that you can see the cut surface. It also helps to be familiar with the basics of leaf anatomy so that you can be sure the water you see is coming out of the xylem and not the phloem. Luckily, grapevines have large and easy to distinguish vessels and they also don't exude any resins. So it's easy to pick out the xylem from other tissues. Finally, only use compressed nitrogen to make measurements, not air or CO2, which can affect leaf physiology and confound the water potential value. Make sure your gaskets and grommets are in good condition to make the seal both at the petiole and at the chamber lid itself. In general, it's good practice to have your pressure chamber professionally recalibrated before each field season. So the question is, how many measurements should you make per vine? When you're first starting out, it's a good idea to make about a couple measurements for each vine. If the two measurements are within about a bar of each other, then you can move on. If they're not within a bar of each other, then it's good to make a third measurement for that vine. 
And then the question becomes, how many measurements do you make per irrigation block? It's a good idea to make about, to choose about three to five representative vines for that irrigation block. And then once you get a good idea of the water status of those vines, then you can move on to the next block. So let's see what this process looks like in real time from start to finish. Here are some additional tips with interpreting the measurements. Leaf water potential measurements give you lower or more negative values than stem water potential measurements, usually by about one to two bars. Leaf water potential values higher or less negative than negative 10 bars are considered non-stress. Between negative 10 and negative 12 is considered mild stress. Between negative 12 and negative 14, moderate stress and negative 14 or lower is considered severe stress. Stem water potential values higher than minus eight bars are considered non-stressed. Between minus eight and minus 10 are mild stress. Between minus 10 and minus 12 are moderate stress. And minus 12 or lower is considered severe stress. Thanks for watching everyone. And if you have questions about any of these techniques, please visit our website at owri.oregonstate.edu where you can find my contact details as well as a bunch of other information related to viticulture. Thank you.